Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Since it is the coldest part of the year, you know, we're, we're in January, uh, wintertime fishing, and of course we're looking at the pre-spawn pretty soon here. Uh, I wanted to go through my trailer selection for my chatterbaits. I use chatterbaits all through the year, but they're really, really good this time of year. Um, you know, you can catch a lot of fish and a lot of big fish on a chatterbait in the coldest months of the year, but it's really critical to choose the right trailer for cold water fishing. Uh, I'm gonna go through three different trailers that I use uh, during this time of year. These are the only trailers that I really tend to throw this time of year. I mean, I say only, but you never know when that situation arises where I feel like I need a different trailer. Uh, but in general, I'm gonna be using the Z-Man Razor Shads, the new Helicross, and the Goat Series, the various sizes of the Goat Series. So, um, you know, that pretty much covers all of my chatterbait fishing during the coldest months. So let's dive into each of these different trailers and when I like to use them in what situations. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the Razor Shads. The Razor Shads is a really cool bait that I've, I've recently started using the last two or three years uh, that is really super versatile. But the one thing that the, the Razor Shads really does, and it may sound like it's a, a, a weakness, but it's actually a strength, is that it doesn't have a whole lot of inherent action. So it doesn't you know, have any flapping uh, appendages like the, the Goat uh, or the Goat Series or the, uh, the Helicrod. Um, and it, it, you know, it does have these little segments, these three segments. So it does have a little bit of swimming action, but in general, it's very, very subtle. So what I like the razor shads for is those situations uh, where I want the chatterbait on the pause to glide. So have kind of a, a uh, horizontal gliding action. That's where the razor shads really excels. Uh, I'm able to, to stop that chatterbait and have it glide all the way to the bottom. So it's not just just parachuting down vertically, it actually has that, that horizontal action. So that's really important, especially this time of year, because a lot of the time I'm actually uh, yo-yoing these chatterbaits. So I'll actually be uh, you know, fishing these chatterbaits similar to fishing a jig. Uh, so the uh, razor shads allows me to have a really cool glide to it uh, when I'm yo-yoing it. So that's the reason why I really like the razor shads. So those situations where you're looking for a bait that has more of a horizontal action to it on the pause, that's when you want to go to the razor shads. Um, it just is, is very buoyant and has just the perfect profile to allow it to have that, that type of action. Um, really what I like to use the, the razor shads for is when I'm focusing on bait fish. So yes, it is, it is we've got the, the fire craw color, which is extremely popular. We've got all these in the fire craw just because it stands out real well in the video, but also because this time of year, fire craw is just, well, on fire. Uh, but, but generally, when I'm choosing the razor shads, I, I like to uh, be using it to imitate some type of bait fish, whether it's bluegill or, or shad. Usually it's shad, so a lot of times I'm gonna be using it in the pearls or the, uh, the, the color called the deal something like that, um, but I do use it for my crawfish imitation because it, it kind of has that same action a crawfish would have. It would kind of, uh, you know, jerk up off the bottom, you know, scurry away, and then on the pause, it kind of glides down to the bottom. So the razor shads does have that action, but generally I like it for uh, bait fish imitation. And, uh, and yeah, so the razor shads, great trailer. I use that all year round, uh, and it's just been one of the best fish catchers I've got. Next, we've got the Helicross. This is a brand new bait. Um, this is obviously excellent for imitating crawfish. You know, this is not a shad imitation uh, trailer. So I'm not using this, this profile uh, trailer for imitating shad generally. Um, it, it, is, it is one of the best for fishing a chatterbait in stained and muddy water. It gives off a big profile. These claws actually, they have a lot of action to them. They do, they do flap a little bit. Uh, 
that on the back of a, ch a chatterbait, they're a little bit more su subdued than if, say, you were flipping and pitching this bait. Uh, I think it's what it is, is the turbulence from the blade itself actually, uh, you know, it prohibits the, the uh, claws from actually flapping a ton, but it's just the right amount of action. And uh, this one right here, pretty good for all retrieves. You know, if you just have a steady retrieve, it's also very good for the yo-yo technique if you're trying to imitate those, those uh, crayfish. And it's also really good in shallow water. And the reason for that is because it's got such a bulky profile and because these, these claws tend to, to create a lot of drag, this bait will, will uh, work very well up shallow when you wanna slow roll a bait and maintain uh, a shallow depth with a chatterbait. Chatterbait already wants to kind of pull to the surface, but a bulky bait like this or the goat tend to bring those, those baits closer to the surface and allow you to slow roll them. So really good cold water, uh, dirty water in those situations that you're trying to imitate a crawfish. Finally, we've got the goat series. Of course, this comes in baby goat, goat, and the, the billy goat, so you can match it to all different size chatterbaits. For instance, you know, right here, we've got the, the cross size chatterbait, but in the box, we've got the brand new mini. Max chatterbait. So you can see it's a lot smaller, blade's a lot smaller, the bait itself is a lot smaller, um, but uh, you can use the baby goat. Uh, and so you can you can just match the size. This right here is the billy goat, so you can kind of see the comparison. This is the largest of them. Uh, but this is also very similar. The situations I'm gonna be using the goat series in is very similar to what I'd use the helicross. Um, this one I'd say has a more consistent tail action. So these little kicking feet actually have a very consistent action to them. So when you want that more action, when the water starts warming up, um, you know, that's when you want to move to a, uh, uh, a goat because it has a lot of action. It really appeals to those fish that, that are really keying in on that action. Um, one thing I really like the goat for is to imitate bluegill and crawfish. Uh, this, is, this is a really good bluegill imitation as well as crawfish. And it's also a really good shad imitation. You know, during the warmer, warmer months, I'll throw this quite a bit, and this is actually my favorite uh, uh, swim jig trailer. And so this is uh, just overall a really, really good bait for uh, as a trailer on either a swim jig or a chatterbait. Uh, but in the cold months, it's usually trying to imitate a crawfish or a bluegill. Um, and again, this is for dirtier water, muddy conditions, uh, something where you want a thicker profile, uh, you want a bait that, that produces a lot of vibration and action, that's when you're gonna want the goat. All right, so that's that's pretty much my, my selection process for choosing a chatterbait trailer during the coldest months. It's pretty simple, but that's verbatim uh, what goes through my head when I'm selecting a trailer uh, during you know the, the winter and pre-spawn months. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop a comment below and make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you do like this video. It helps motivate me to continue doing these videos. So thank you very much. I'm gonna see you guys out on the water. Take care.